Welcome to the HBX Snowmelt webinar. This is a short PowerPoint presentation on the basics of snowmelt and how our snowmelt systems function. A snowmelt system is used to remove snow and ice via embedded electric cables or hydronic tubing. Some common areas for snowmelt systems are driveways and ramps, walkways, parking areas, stairways, loading docks, and car washes. To take it a step further, you will set up your control to an idle temperature. In this example, we have 28 degrees. When it starts to snow, this is where you want your system to turn on and go into melt. So from here, we get out of idle and into melt. In this example, it's set for 50 degrees, and we will melt the slab out in the snow zone. When the snow stops falling, the control will go back into idle at the temperature you've set. Here are some of the terminology we use when talking about the HBX snow melt systems. We have two different intensity settings. Instant intensity. It's a snow melt sensor, sees a greater snowfall rate than the set percentage. The control will come out of idle and go into melt. For example, if you have a client that doesn't want to see any snow on their driveway, you can set the control to be approximately 5 or 10 percent. If you have a client that doesn't mind to have an inch or two on the driveway, you can set the control to 30 or 40 percent. Constant intensity. If the snowfall rate is greater than the set percentage for longer than the constant time that is set in the control, it will come out of idle and go into melt. Your idle temperature is a minimum slab temperature when there is no snow present. Your melt temperature is a slab target when snow is present. Melt time the amount of time that the system will stay in melt after no snow is present. This will melt any snow that has accumulated and not melted. Warm weather shutdown and cold weather shutdown. So the biggest difference between our snow melt system and everybody else's system is that we have developed an optical sensor. What this allows you to do is see the snowfall. It's not a typical continuity sensor where the snow hits a sensor and it has to melt the snow on it and then make continuity between the brass fingers and then it sends a signal out to the control. We can actually see how much snow is falling and tune the snow melt system based on the rate. There are two parts here. Is there is a socket for installation and a snow sensor that comes with 100 feet of wire. It comes with a very good three-year warranty with the sensor, and it's a polycarbonate plastic. That's the hardest plastic you can get. So it's scratch resistant, and it will not affect the optics of the sensor. This graph is an example of potential savings you can have with the HBX snowmelt based on the intensity settings that you set in the control. When you set the intensity percentage on the control, the system will not turn on until the snowfall rate reaches that number. With the conventional system, as soon as there is moisture on the sensor, the system will turn on. The main control we use for snow melting is the Snow 500 standalone control. This will not do multiple boilers as it only has one boiler TT contact. <coughs> you can do multiple mixing, so injection or valve control, and it's a single zone operation, so it works with one of our optical sensors. The control has idle, melt, and force melt demands built in has the instantaneous and continuous snowfall settings, and you also have warm weather and cold weather shutdown.
Here you can see where you would wire up the snow sensor, system sensor, outdoor sensor system pump, and furthermore. The Snow 500 has an easy to use dial for programming that you can either turn right or left and press gently to access the different settings within the control. If the control is left to idle in the programming mode, it will automatically return to the main status screen. We can see the user interface and what relays are on. We can see the current temperature, the snowfall rate, if warm weather or cold weather shutdown is on or off. The multicolor backlit display is one of the key features of the Snow 500. Depending on which mode of operation is selected, the screen will change to indicate information about the status of the system. Light blue means no demand. Red is in melt mode, and dark blue is in idle mode. With this application, we are running a boiler, the optical sensor out in the slab, running the injection pump, and the system pump. With this slide, we are running a floating action valve, also, with the optical sensor in the slab, next we will talk about the installation of the optical snow melt sensor. The most important thing to keep in mind is not to cut the included 100 foot cable. This will change the resistance in the control and will not operate properly. If more than 100 feet is needed, you can extend the cable using a two-pair shielded 18-gauge cable up to 200 feet in total length. Something we commonly see not being done also is proper drainage for the snow sensor. What needs to be done is drill a hole through the bottom of the socket to allow any moisture or water that builds up inside of that socket. If the drainage is not done at the socket and it fills up with water and turns to ice, this ultimately can cause damage to the sensor. Installing the sensor at the correct location in the slab is critical for proper functioning snow ice melting system. The sensor should be located where snowfall is normal and not affected by surrounding buildings. The sensor location should also be halfway between the two heating pipes that are installed in the slab. There is a thermistor built into the sensor that senses the slab temperature at all times. Keeping the sensor away from pipes in the slab ensures the accurate operation of your snow ice melting system. When mounting the socket and cover plate in the snow melt slab, use rebar mounted in the soil below the level of the socket and cover plate so that the cover plate is level with the finished grade of the snow melting surface. On the socket, there are four brass plugs and these are used to make contact with the brass ring on the optical sensor to read the slab temperature. Do not manipulate the plugs as this will affect the proper functioning of the temperature sensor. With our optical sensor, you can remote mount the sensor on a roof, in a flower bed, but with that, you will need to install the now included thermistor in the slab you are melting. It's, you will need to know the temperature of the slab for the system to function properly. 
So we suggest when mounting the optical sensor and the paving stones that you install the external thermistor instead of the temperature sensor within the, the optical sensor. When installing the snow sensor, make sure you are choosing the correct setting. If you were installing it in the slab, you would choose INT. If remote mounting the sensor, make sure you choose REM for remote mount. This slide just shows you that you run the cable from the snow melt sensor to the snow control, and that can be run through a conduit. Thank you for viewing the snow melt webinar, and if you have further questions, please feel free to email or call us at the information above.